hot. <laughs> Love it. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, so Platypus Labs, um, and thank you again for allowing me to share this with you. I, I really feel great about the start that we have. We're an entrepreneurial kind of organization, again, based out of Detroit, um, where, you know, startups, you know, don't typically come from, but um, we have a really fresh approach, a boutique approach to kind of this consulting. So we try to harness the power of invention, the power of innovative thinking that lays, again, dormant. Um, and I just wanted to share a couple statistics with you, and then I have, a, I have a question. So we are living in what we describe as the age of creativity. Um, we really and truly believe that this is the only thing that allows us to be um, to have a competitive advantage. It allows us to be able to foster growth. It allows us to retain talent and attract talent because it's a very powerful force and very rewarding. So just a couple of statistics. McKinsey did a study recently that they have the prediction that by the year 2030, up to 800 million jobs will be lost due to automation globally. So in the US, this translates to about 80 million jobs. So again, creativity becomes that one thing that can make the difference as we look at AI, robotics, whatever, whatever will you know, transition and, and uh, displace jobs. Um, the Economic Forum, the World Economic Forum comes out with a study every couple of years and actually creativity was number 10 on the list in 2015, but now has risen to number three on the list by 2020. And if you look at this list, I mean, complex problem solving and critical thinking are really just derivatives of how you bring creativity to light. So we believe, again, that it's this type of skill that is, again, globally, um, is a priority for leaders globally. Uh, the next statistic is actually from LinkedIn. So if you look across LinkedIn for the last couple of years, over 20 million job posts, creativity is the number one job requirement or um, skill that they're looking for. And then the last kind of stat here is that IBM did a study of 1,500 global CEOs across 60 different countries. And again, not only for the workforce, but also for their leadership, creativity is one of the skills that they require that they need to have. So um, I think, you know, one of the things that creativity people, it makes, it's kind of a squishy topic. It makes people uncomfortable. People kind of squirm in their seats as I talk to business professionals. Um, and not all creativity is, is um, I would say, created equal. So as we set up the definition, so imagination is kind of that childlike um, ability to imagine things that don't exist in the world today. Uh, creativity is when you take that imagination and apply it to an opportunity. An invention is certainly lovely. You're creating something new in the world, but it's not until you have something that provides value that you have an innovation. So this is something that, you know, the world needs or something that people will pay money for. There's value, an inherent value in what you're creating. Um, so when we talk about inventions and innovations, the, def or the distinction there is that, again, people will value it. It will help the world. Um, the good news is that we are all creative. So this is an interesting statistic that actually came from a six-year study Harvard conducted. And they found that over 80% of creativity is actually learned. So just like any other muscle, we can learn creativity. We can learn to harness that power. If you were learning to play the guitar, if you were learning to play golf, you would practice it over time. You would actually be able to then call upon those skills when you want to perform. So in a business setting, oftentimes we say, okay, let's go in the conference room and brainstorm, right? Let's have this brainstorm where we're all going to come up with solutions. But we haven't practiced that skill of creativity over the years in order to be able to have the full potential. Um, in this same study, actually, and it culminated in a wonderful book called Innovator's DNA, if you're at all interested, it's, it's really terrific. But they targeted, they, they found the top five skills, the common skills that the most creative people on the planet possess. And I won't go through these in length, but um, I think it's fairly interesting. So associating, um, bringing disparately different topics together. So somewhere along the line, someone said, chocolate and peanut butter. Those would go great together. Um, observation. This is having that heightened sense of awareness. Um, a lot of times we just become very 
productive, you know, individuals where we're just getting things done and we don't allow ourselves the time to have that inspiration seep in so that we can bring in different ideas and see what others are doing in the world in order to um, help our solutions. Um, experimentation is just being comfortable with that pivot, learn type philosophy. So constantly tinkering, trying to find new approaches, not afraid to fail. And I would say oftentimes our corporate cultures have, you know, really suppressed our creativity because they cause us to fear uh, newness. Um, the next one is networking. So this is not handing out business cards, though, of course, that's important too. This one is actually seeking divergent viewpoints. So talking to an artist, talking to a musician, talking to a professional athlete or a physicist, bringing in different ways that other people will solve the problem or look at your challenge with fresh eyes. Um, and then questioning. This is just questioning like a child would. I mean, we all probably have had children in our lives. They ask, you know, an insanely... I, an insane amount of questions. This is the type of questioning we need to do as business leaders in order to ask why, why not, what if. So um, I'll actually, I'll, I'll, I can skip this story, but um, the fact of the matter is that we believe, and, and as we have built this little entrepreneurial startup, people never disagree with us, right? People always say, yes, innovation is crucial. It is critical. It is, you know, the time of our world, especially uh, post-COVID, that things are changing so fast. Consumer dynamics are changing. We have to unlock innovation in order to foster growth, in order to sustain new ways of doing business. So my question for you and kind of the, the, um, the reason that I have reached out to One Million Cups is that I, this is the part I don't understand. So what creates the urgency? If... 80, you know, 85% of people are saying, yes, innovation is critical. Yes, it's important. What makes a business leader, what makes a, a you know, a, an organization say, now is the time that we have to invest in this type of effort. Now is the time where we actually have to say, yes, this is an important long-term program for our future to actually invest in building innovation into our DNA. So that's the question that that I'm trying to solve. I, I don't um, I don't know the answer yet. I think I'm still trying to figure out why someone would say this is important. This is something.